Hey, this is Ray Ortega from RayOrtega.com and ThePodcastersStudio.com. Coming to you today from a very wide angle. There is a new 11 to 16 millimeter on the camera, but what we're really here for today is what you see in the shot, which is the microphones, typically something you wouldn't see in the shot, especially if they're on a boom like this. But today, the focus is these two microphones. And you can see me looking down. I'm looking at the Tascam recorder that these microphones are running into. And what we have here today is on this side, we have the Rode NTG3 inside this uh, Rode blimp. And this little guy right here is the Audio-Technica AT4053B. And what I'm curious about with these two microphones and what I want to test here uh, for you is how they sound indoors. Now typically with shotgun microphones and uh, microphones that are being boomed indoors for dialogue, the longer shotgun like the NTG3 is not necessarily the best choice and that has to do with reflections uh, off the walls and in small spaces or large spaces. Uh, your voice bounces around the walls and it can come back into uh, the shotgun into the sides where it's supposed to be rejecting and cause um, a weird issue. It just doesn't quite sound right. And I love this microphone. It's really expensive. And if I had it, I'd need to use it for both instances. But I do a lot of indoor interviews and booming for dialogue. And I wanted to see um, what is the right mic for that? The right mic for that, right? And this one here is actually billed. Uh, if you look on the B&H website, for example, it's a dialogue boom microphone, and it's a really short um, hypercardioid condenser microphone. Now, the Rode NTG3 is a super cardioid polar pattern, and so it picks up a little bit more than the AT4053, which is a hypercardioid uh, polar pattern microphone, as well as it's very short and doesn't have the long rejection tube. So this microphone in theory is better suited for indoors because it can handle those reflections better. And that's what we're testing here. And this is certainly a reflective room. I'm just in my house here and I can hear in my headphones uh, the reverb coming through. So maybe not the best test for these microphones, but that probably actually is pretty good. We'll hear the difference between how they handle the reflections in the room. Now I've got the Tascam uh, set up and it is the DR60D and it is running both these microphones off of phantom power. They both need phantom power. The levels are set pretty much the same. The gain is set to highest on the Tascam DR60D, which you can hear it's pretty quiet. And the fader levels are about the same. Now I do notice that the NTG3 is a little bit hotter on the levels, uh, getting great levels on both this one seems to be a little bit more sensitive uh, to levels. And I've heard that this microphone's really sensitive. And this mic is, it's much more because it's a professional uh, type microphone in that you can really take this out in the field and pretty much beat it up and it works great. Kind of like a Shure SM58 microphone <laughs> for rock stars. But this microphone is, you know, handles the elements better as well as does a great job at rejecting signals that can interfere with uh, your microphone, RF, Wi-Fi, stuff like that. Its build is doing a really good job against that. And of course, this one again, the 4053B is a pretty well respected microphone and it doesn't break the budget, although it is still not cheap. Both these microphones are not cheap. And you can see here, I have a just an impact multi-boom light stand, which I'm using to boom these microphones. And in fact, the only one that's set up proper is the Rode NTG3. And I just have this, uh, this AT4053B, uh, it is on these clips that are supposed to hold a uh, reflector. So this is a great boom because it does a lot of jobs and it's serving my purpose here for my dual microphone test. And so for me, it's kind of a test of, uh, could I buy the Rode NTG3? Could I invest in it and have it work for both functions? I'll use it outside and an event and can I use it inside for interviews and I've already done a couple interviews with it and I really uh, I like the sound so this test is to see how much better does the AT43B handle reflections and both these microphones are about two feet away from me my arm length here should be about two feet so 
They're both set at about really the same distance, and so that should be a good indicator. And two feet is really the farthest I'd wanna be uh, to boom somebody and get quality sounding audio. You know, if I could get within a foot and a half, that would be even more ideal. Now, again, this picture that you're seeing is very um, distorted. It's hard to tell because we're on a super wide angle lens, which I'm also testing out and uh, I think I like it a lot. And so ideally this mic, each of these microphones would be just out of the shot, you know, like this. Well, you can't see it here. They would be just out of the shot and actually be closer to uh, my mouth or the person who is being interviewed, their mouth. And you can hear, I just lean forward a little bit and get within about a half a foot more or a foot more. And it sounds great, sounds really good. So these mics do better, all mics do better the closer you get to them. And so this is a really good test of being, you know, sort of further than I would normally want to be, but probably realistically how far I would be in most situations uh, where I'm booming somebody. I'm probably not going to be able to get much closer than two feet, a foot and a half. And uh, I do shoot fairly tight shots, so that makes it nice for the boom operator to get in close and uh, not get in the shot. Of course, you could always boom from underneath too if you needed a lot of headroom. So that's the Rode NTG3 and the AT4053B going into the Tascam DR60, about two feet away, high gain. The fader knobs are at about uh, 11 o'clock or 40%. And it sounds good to me as I'm monitoring here in my headphones. We'll see how it sounds when I actually get it into the edit. And then of course you get to be the judge of which microphone you like better. And it is always about what situation you're going to use the microphone in, right? One microphone, one camera, one lens is not going to be best for everybody. It really is how are you going to shoot? And you know, this nice 4053B uh, could be great for indoors beyond maybe handling the reflections better. It's really small, okay? So you can get into tighter spots. And of course, this microphone isn't as big as you see it here. It's inside this large Rode blimp, which helps block some wind. And there's actual uh, more wind protection that goes on the outside of this. But the AT4053, really compact. Maybe you want to be less obvious when you're recording. So the 4053 would help do that. And of course, we've got the Rode mini boom pole, which you could use to get in. And you could use these on top of a camera, but they're not gonna be as good because again, they do pick up uh, audio from behind as well as in front. Not as much, but they do have a polar pattern that picks up from behind as well. So everything behind the camera is gonna be picked up a little bit more, including camera handling noise. So that's the key to getting these microphones off the camera and closer to your subject. That's how you're gonna get quality audio from your microphones. And the AT4053B, has a slightly larger pickup pattern from behind than the NTG3. Uh, you exchange a tighter pattern up front for a bigger pattern in the back. This one you get a bigger pattern up front and a tighter pattern in the back and both do a good job at rejecting sound from the sides. All right, so hopefully that helps. Uh, let me know in the comments which one you liked better. Ask any questions that you have. Uh, please subscribe and I'll see you next time.